Welcome back to Come College Online Ministry and Encouragement. I am Dr. Jewel Williams here with our Wednesday Word for October the 25th. Our theme for the year is Tell the Story. Our scriptural um, um, reference is Psalms 51 verses 12 through 15. And it reads, Restore to me the joy of your salvation and sustain me with a willing spirit. Then I will teach transgressors your ways and sinners shall be converted and returned to you. Rescue me from blood guiltiness, O God, the God of my salvation. Then my tongue will sing joyfully of your righteousness and your justice. O Lord, open my lips that my mouth may declare your praises. Uh, and so we're continuing our, our theme, Tell the Story. And for this one, it's about the healer. In today's installment, you were called to be a healer. I'm reading from Mark 6, 12 through 13. Let's have a word of prayer and then we'll jump right in. Father, we thank you that you have offered us so many wonderful things, but not only for us. It's not just so that we can benefit from your uh, grace and mercy, but Father, it's so that we can turn around and be a vessel to offer your same benefits unto someone else. So Father, I pray today that someone would just, even listening to this, would um, see themselves and be able to hear what you want them to hear. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Starting at verse 12. So they went out and preached that men should repent, that is, think differently, recognize sin, turn away from it, and live changed lives. And they were casting out many demons and were anointing with oil many who were sick and healing them. So this month, as I said, we've been dealing with looking at healing. So let me just give you a basic recap. First, we talked about how God hears our prayer for healing. Um, he heard the request of Hezekiah and gave him another 15 years. We also talked about how important it is for us to have faith in God while also accepting that sometimes our requests don't turn out the way we see because sometimes we lose loved ones to their diseases. We also talked about how Jesus heals our emotional issues. Now I didn't say it, it say it I don't think I said it um, then, but, but I want to mention it here. There are hindrances to our healings. If I refuse to forgive someone, I can't expect God to answer my request for healing. If I refuse to renounce my association or connect into to negative emotions or, or negative lifestyles or negative things, I, I, um, I may not receive the healing because those things stand in the way. My sins can stand in the way of me being able to, to be free from the, the effects of Satan in my life. Um, and I've heard it said, you know, that God doesn't deliver us from our friends. So in other words, really what it's being saying is if I'm in agreement with my negative emotions, if I'm in agreement with my bitterness or anger or, 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 or rejection, I can't really find the relief from how that will affect me or even affect me in a physical sense because I feel like I have a right to it. And, and really I have a right to that emotion in my thinking, but that emotion and that it's not just an emotion now, but that spirit of rejection or bitterness now has, has a control of me. But last week we looked at how Jesus offered it all. He, he offered healing, but first and foremost, he was offering us a relationship through the sacrifice uh, that he gave so that we could receive the benefits of the kingdom, of being healed, and, and of all of the benefits that, that God gives to us. So today we want to look at the fact that Jesus calls us now to do what we saw him doing. So my first point is true disciples preach. Verse 12, it says, so they went out and preached that men should repent. That is, think, that is, think differently, recognize sin, turn away from it, and live changed life. Jesus preached the good news of the gospel, that men and women could be saved because of his death, resurrection, and return to the Father. The disciples offered to others what Jesus offered to them, the ability to become sons and daughters of God. They offered this greatest healing, which is the healing of the soul, so that people could live changed lives, no longer um, to be like walking among the dead, but now alive in Christ. Let me look at a couple of scriptures. Matthew 4, 17 says, First, from that time, Jesus began to preach and say, repent, change your inner self, your old way of thinking, regret past sins, live your life in a way that proves repentance, seek God's purpose for your life, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Okay, so we saw what Jesus did. You know, what did Jesus do? He preached. He talked about repent, get change your life, and 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 uh, regret your past sins, and then live out your salvation walk in God's purpose so Jesus is taught uh, was preaching the message of the kingdom let's look at 2nd Timothy 4 and 2 preach, preach the word 
as an official messenger. Be ready when the time is right and even when it is not. Keep your sense of urgency, whether the opportunity seems favorable or unfair, favorable, whether convenient or inconvenient, whether welcome or unwelcome, correct. Those who err in doctrine or behavior, warn those who sin, exhort and encourage those who are growing towards spiritual maturity with an inexhaustible patience and faithful teaching. So what is the requirement? If you and I are children of God, the preaching is not just for the preacher. Preaching is not just for the pulpit. Preach the word is that all of us have been called, in a sense, to tell of God's goodness, to tell the repentant message and so part of the healing is this is how now we partner with God we received all of this and again I, I don't know if I said it or not but we this is not just so I can have all what I need and I can just live a comfortable life I need and you need to have a burden for the souls of others and so we've been told to be ready to preach to give the message whether it seems urgent or not whether they like it or not I mean oftentimes I I mean I've been doing these messages for I don't even know how many years probably for about seven or eight years now um I don't do it to try to get famous I don't do it because um I'm looking for a following I just felt led that God you want me to share these things they will last me when I'm not even here the internet and all of that is still going on these messages will still be here maybe God will draw somebody and they'll hear this message and know that they need to be saved they can have a relationship with God and that they can start to learn about the things that God has for them amen and so that's what we have to do the second point is true disciples heal and deliver and that's in verse 13 and they were casting out many demons and were anointed with oil many who were sick and and healing them the disciples saw the work jesus did and he instructed them to do likewise today we are still under that same mandate see that's kingdom mandate so that mandate has not changed and for some reason many of us have believed that this mandate is no longer important we kind of feel like there's no healing there's no delivery but um if jesus did it i don't know why we are not doing it um, he healed the sick. He cast out demons. And so when I say true disciples heal and disciple, uh, um, deliver, I'm not talking about out of our own power. Because if we do, we become like the, the sons of Scebia who tried to cast out the demons and were beaten by the man because they didn't have the godly authority to do that. I'm talking about doing so by the authority of God. So we just want to be clear. I'm not saying that I am a healer or that I am a deliverer. God may use me as a healer. God may use me as a deliverer, but it is his power and in his authority that that happens. Matthew 8, 16 says, When evening came, they brought to him many who were under the power of demons, and he cast out the evil spirits with a word and restored to health all who were sick, exhibiting his authority as Messiah. So Jesus did it. Jesus was consented, continually teaching. Remember I said he taught by what he said, but also he backed it up by what he did. So he was teaching by his actions that he had the power and authority over demons. He was able to cast them out. And it says with a word. And I appreciate this because God, Jesus did stuff so many different ways. And I think that's partly so we won't try to make one formula. Okay, you can only do this because then if I'm doing it this way and you doing it that way, you won't. No, he healed with a word here. Other times he cast out, he did it different. Same thing with healing. He didn't always heal the same so that we could not put him in a box. It tells us we just need to listen to the Holy Ghost. And what are the Holy Ghost telling you? To, if he tell you what word to say, say a word. If he tell you something else, you do it. But you speak what he tells you to speak. Matthew 10 and 1 says, The 12 disciples, this in the prison, the 12 disciples instructions for service. Jesus summoned his 12 disciples and gave them authority and power over unclean spirits to cast them out and to heal every kind of disease and every kind of sickness. I just believe in the name of Jesus that God has taken us back to a time where we're understanding the fullness of the kingdom and that that is to be a true disciple. We have to look like the things that Jesus did. He gave his disciples this authority over these unclean spirits to cast them out and to heal every kind of disease and every kind of sickness and we have to believe by faith that god is still doing that in us in us today so we don't have to be afraid because i think sometimes we get fearful i'm not going to pray for somebody because what if it doesn't happen well how would you know unless you do it so pray if it don't happen that's okay keep praying i mean even there's a time in scripture where jesus prayed for somebody 
to be or touch somebody. I'm not sure if he prayed or touched or spoke or whatever. He was healing someone and, and the, the man and he asked him what he see. And he said, man, look like basically fuzzy trees. And he did it again. So guess what? If Jesus, who is all power and authority, spoke, had to speak twice for somebody to get complete healing. So what if you got to speak 50 times, 100 times, 150 times? Just do it. That's the whole thing. Just do it. The enemy wants us to to think because it won't happen not to do it at all. And then we become defeated. Amen. Mark 16 and 17 says, These signs will accompany those who have believed. In my name, they will cast out demons. They will speak in new tongues. So I'm excited to know that God is telling us that he has given us the ability. We should look like, as his true disciples, we should look a certain way. And that that is, he said, we should cast out demons. We should speak with new tongues. Um, and so, you know, there's a lot of debate on, on the whole tongues thing. And I, I'm not going to actually get into that because I'm talking about the healing, but we should accompany him. There's something we should look like. We should look like him. And the question is, do we look like him? So what's the life lesson? Healing isn't gone. It's still available to us today. To say God stopped healing is like saying he stopped being God. He still heals. He still wants us to believe in that healing and restoration of lives. He also wants us to be the vessels that are willing to go and pray for the sick. I love what James 5, 14 and 15 says, Is anyone sick among you? You must call to the elders, the spiritual leaders of the church, and they are to pray over him, anointing him with oil in the name of the Lord, and the prayer of faith will restore the one who is sick, and the Lord will raise him up. And if he has committed sins, he will be forgiven. I thank God because this is our mandate that we must be willing to now step in and become those who are called to be healers. We're called to be healers. So let me give you a recap before I pray. True disciples preach. We preach the kingdom message. I talked about this earlier in the month. We don't preach you like me, I like you. We don't preach stuff that draws people. That's not what it's about. We preach kingdom kingdom always jesus message no matter what it looks like always in there there's this reference to us having a relationship with jesus christ even if we're talking about people being restored it still all points back to jesus christ as the source amen if your messages are not pointing to jesus as the source then you want to be careful because you're pointing to another gospel another god and the gospel the good news everything points to jesus and then the second thing that we talked about is we true disciples we we're healers we're deliverers and that is by the power that god and the authority that christ because of our relationship with jesus christ we have that power and authority to be able to do those things so let me pray for us today lord i pray that you would help us to become the healers that you called us to be you have called us first you did it for us you did it in us and so now you've called us to go and tell the story about who you are as the healer. And in doing so, as we preach, as we demonstrate who we are and the authority and power we have, we point back pe people back to who the true healer is, and that is you. And you've called us to step into lives, Lord God, healing those emotional wounds, healing those physical wounds, healing the bodies, Father. So we pray and ask, Lord, that you would activate in us that desire. Stir up that gift inside of us. Stir it up, Lord God, because I believe that you've given it to us. Now stir it up on the inside of us so that we can step out and be who you've called us to be so we say thank you have your way within us let us not be afraid help us to be bold and and to preach even as that said in season out of season whether it's comfortable whether it's received or not help us to go and do what you've called us to do in jesus name we pray amen god bless